is Brody with B Design Works, and today we're going to review the install of the Tesla Model S sub kit. It comes with the Rockford Fosgate 10 inch 4 ohm driver, the sub enclosure, 500 watts amp, and the LC2i controller. It also comes with the wiring kit to wire everything up. So, with that said, let's get started. So discussing on the wiring of your Rockford Fosgate 500 watt amp and your LC2i controller to your Tesla Model S subsystem. So, let's first talk about the mid splice connectors for picking up to your door speakers. So this is what they look like. They're little solderless, cutless, mid-splice connectors. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the, your speaker wire that you're gonna tie into. You're gonna take your mid-splice connector and push it all the way in to the first one. All right. There's another channel running parallel that your signal wire going to your LC2i controller that will only go in one way. You find out which way it goes in, once you do that, you grab your pliers, you crimp it down, get your case cover, and shut it down. Now we have a good signal without cutting or soldering any of the wires. So now that we know how to do mid splice connectors, we're going to talk about wiring up the LC2i controller. We're going to start at the top with the speaker level inputs. You have your left inputs positive and negative, and your right inputs positive and negative. These are going to be your two pairs coming in for your mid splice connectors, wired up into there. Then you're going to have your remote out, so you're going to have your remote wire going to your amp. Then you're going to have your constant 12 volt, and then you're going to have your grounding wire. Let's go ahead and install those. So now we have our LC2R wired up. You can see we got our remote out going to the remote of our amp. We have our 12 volt constant, which you can pick up from the amp or from the battery, and we have our ground. Now we're going to talk about the output. The output is going to be a set of RCA, able, RCA cables coming from here, the out base outputs, to the input of the amp. So let's go ahead and wire that up. So now we have our RCA cables running from our base output to the standard input of our amp. Now we're going to talk about your speaker inputs from your amp to your sub. Those are just going to be your short speaker wires going from the back of your sub enclosure down to here. Let's wire those up. So now that we have our speaker wires wired up, the last thing we have to do is connect the power and the ground. Now you never want to ground to the negative terminal of your battery because that can create noise in your audio system. So you ground to a grounding point somewhere else in your car and your positive goes to the positive side of the terminal. So let's go ahead and hook those up. So now that we have everything wired up, let's go ahead and recap everything that we went over. We have our left speaker inputs and our right speaker inputs coming in from our mid splice connectors. We have a remote out going to the remote of our amp. We have our 12 volt constant coming from the battery or the positive side of the amp. And we have our ground, either coming from our grounding point or the grounding point of the amp. Then we have our RCA cables out for the base going to the input of our amp. We've got our speaker wire going out of our amp to our sub. We've got our power and we've got our ground. And again, we have a remote cable. And that's how you wire up the system. The last thing we're gonna discuss is the option to add your volume control or your punch level control. This is, plugs right into the amp. And then you can mount this under the dash or anywhere else you'd like where it's easy access and this will remotely control the volume or punch of your sub. So we're at the front here and depending on whether you're before the refresh or after the refresh or if you're a dual version or a non-dual version, your flunks are going to look a little different between all of them. But the same principles are going to apply. The first thing is remove these three plastic covers. And there's two hood stops on either side. They go ahead and they screw out like so. Then all these three plastic pieces are just held on by clips. So you can go ahead and grab them, gently lift, and it'll come off. So let's take all three off. So let's talk about differences. Once you have those three pieces removed, you're going to have to find your battery. Now this is before the refresh, non-dual, so our battery is located right under the air filter. You're going to take your air filter out, and you've got these mushroom clips, one, two, under this grommet, under this grommet, that's going to allow you to gain access to the battery. Now if you have a later version, you can go ahead and find your battery right under these fuse boxes. You're going to have to remove one more piece of trim and some air filter right here to gain access to it. It's much easier to work on, so if you have a later version, you're much better. Now that the clips are removed and we have the trim piece up, we're going to, have to remove the rest of the air box. There are two 10 millimeter bolts located on either side and there's two clips on top. Once we pull this out, the battery is going to be right underneath. So now that you have that air filter piece removed, you have access to your battery. Here's your positive side, 
and there's your negative terminal. There's also one grommet right behind it, and there's one grommet right up here in the corner that you can use for passing your cables through. So talking about amp mounting, one of your options if you have one of the earlier versions is up here in the front cubby. You can go ahead and mount it in there, you can mount it to the sidewalls, and you can just drill right into the plastic if you'd like. Now if you have one of the later versions, your cubby and your frunk are much smaller. So you can go ahead and you can mount it to the floor or you can mount it to the wall. Or when we get to it later, we can show you other places you can mount it in the rear of the car. So let's go ahead and move to the rear. So now that we're in the back, let's go ahead and talk about wiring. If you have the ultra high fidelity system, we go ahead and recommend disconnecting the sub that's on the passenger side so it's not interfering with the new sub. So the new sub, they're all installed here on the driver's side of the car. Now we were talking about amp wiring earlier. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sell our amp underneath the sub. This carpet lifts up and what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of half inch MDF, slide it underneath the carpet and screw the amp through the carpet into the MDF so we're not drilling into the car. Now there's other mounting options. You can go ahead and just mount it right onto the floor of the front. But we like to tuck it under there so it's out of the way. You can still put stuff back here and you're not putting stuff on top of your amp. Now that we're in the back, I'm going to start taking the panels apart for the wiring. First thing is, this trim piece, there's a Torx 20 bit underneath that we're going to have to remove. Once you remove that, this piece can then go outwards. And again, it's held in my clips. So you're going to have to remove this piece. Then you're going to move to the carpet, where we have these carpet plugs that just come straight out. So now that we have those trim panels removed, we can go ahead and start moving the carpeting. This one removed the plugs. This piece of carpet has one more plug that we can remove. And then we're going to start taking this piece of carpeting out. Now be careful, these also have lights in them that you have to disconnect before you can pull the carpet out. So we're going to, head, we're going to grab this carpet, we're going to pull into the car, and then we're going to pull out. So now this is what the carpeting looks like when it's removed, so we can set that aside. Now this is our wiring. So if you're installing the amp in the back, we recommend this be one of the better ground points to ground to if you have the amp right here. This is also the carpeting that comes out that you can put your MDF underneath. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to route our wiring along these bundles underneath and moving forward. So we're moving to the back to the front. So you're going to route your wire between this trim piece and the car body following the bundles of wire that's already traveling backwards. So depending if you have fishing wire or not, you don't have to actually remove this piece. But if you have to, you can go ahead and you can grab this piece that you can lift up carefully and it's held in my clips. And that will assist you in feeding the wire from the back to the front. So let's go ahead and move front. So now that we're at the front driver's side, you're going to continue removing the bottom door sills. So you're going to remove this piece down here, and then you're going to start removing this piece and this piece first. So let's go ahead and let's show how to remove those. So the first step is to remove this component right here. You're going to grab your pry bar, gently, outward force. Now be careful the wire connected. You're going to go ahead and disconnect the wire. Set the piece aside. Next are going to be your two door sill pieces. You have your upper door sill piece and your lower door sill piece. This has to come out first, like so. And then you go ahead and lift up carefully and remove this piece down here. And there you go. So with the door sill removed, we're going to continue with removing the rest of the front of the dash. So to get this piece out, there's two Torx 20 bits underneath, one located here, one located here. And to get to this one, we have to move this trim panel first. So let's go ahead and remove this trim panel. And the second trim panel. Like so. So let's talk center console trim pieces. So if you have a model before or after the refresh, or if you have the center console storage or not the center console storage, they might look a little different. Some of them have really long trim pieces that are hard to remove without removing the seat first. On those, we just suggest removing the front part and leaving the back half in and just working between the panels. So with the two screws removed and your trim panels removed, you can go ahead and you can remove the center dash piece. You're going to grab underneath it firmly and from the sides firmly and pull the clips out. 
and there you go. And then inspect your clips and make sure you didn't break any, or there aren't any left stuck in the slots. So this is the LC2i controller that we talked about in the beginning of the video. Now, if you don't have the premium audio system or the UHFS system, we suggest mounting the LC2i2 controller right here where the amplifier would be. Now, if you have the UHFS system, there's multiple places you can mount this. You can mount this behind the dash. You can mount this back where you have your amplifier. You can mount this in the front where you have your amplifier. And depending on what model you have, there's actually extra room under here where the factory radio is. You can mount this as well. But most people who order the sub kit don't have the ultra high fidelity system. So we do suggest mounting it right here where the ultra high fidelity system amp would be. So if you have the ultra high fidelity system audio and you have the amp, there's a big connector in here with a purple handle. Now that has all your audios in and out for your amplified system. So you can actually go ahead, you can pick up your signals from there as well. So let's talk about wiring. So depending again on what model you have, if you have the later models, you'll find a nice smaller gray connector here with all your audio wires for the front. And you can just tap into all right here. Now this is a later model, so you can find your two front left side over here and your two front right sides over there. So we suggest taking off the door panels and looking at the speaker wire to make sure you're tapping into the right speaker. You're going to go ahead and use some of our quick splice connectors that we discussed in the beginning of the video. So this is an example of how we're writing our wire. There's a bundle of cables going back to our subwoofer and we're following those cables all the way back. And our, our cable is going to go up through the front to our LCI controller right here and our power cable is right underneath this coming from the battery in the front going all the way back. So we have our RCA cables and our power cable, since we just put the LCI2 up front and our amp in the back, just running through here. Now if you put your amp in the front, you're also going to have your speaker cables coming back here. Now you're going to follow these bundles of cable, zip tying along the way, and here's our carpet example. And you're going to have the wires go underneath the carpeting, out between where the bottom carpet and this carpet meet. You're going to have both of them come out between this. So you're going to start at the door panel and remove these two grommets, this rubber one in here and this plastic one in here. So let's go ahead and start. Then the plastic one, you grab the handle, pull out underneath carefully, pull this out. And this only comes out at one angle, so make sure you rotate it and pull out this way. That's going to reveal a 9mm bolt on the earlier ones, and all later ones have the 10mm bolt, and then two T3030 bits to pull out. So we're going to now take the door panel off. You're going to start by grabbing your nylon pry tool. You're going to start at the edge between the window seal and the door panel. You're going to gently start pulling the clips off. Always keeping even pressure. Then you're going to go underneath until now you now have the door panel off. Now you're going to have to undo all the wiring, including this door handle cable for your door. And now be careful, we like to take pictures when we take the door off to make sure that you know where each wiring goes. So we suggest you do the same. If not, it's easy to remember because all the wires are exactly the right length to go where they're supposed to go. So now that we have the door panel off, we're going to remove the speaker to put our speaker on. First thing you need to do is you have this connector. You got two wings on either side. Gently pull while giving upward pressure. It's going to come off. You got your four T20 bits. You're going to unscrew. Now that those are removed, you can, go ahead, you can pull the speaker off. There you have it, your stock speaker. You're going to then take your BA DesignWorks speaker, replace it in the same location, pull your four screws in, and then reconnect your speaker, and then put the door back on, and you're good to go. So now that we have the amp installed underneath this sub, and all of our wiring running from the front to the amp, we're now going to install the sub. Now the sub's covered in the grip tape in the back, and that's going to allow it to adhere incredibly well to the carpeting of the car. There's also a block underneath, so now you're going to have to rotate the sub in, get the block over the support bar, and you're going to firmly push the sub into place. Now that's in, give it a good tug, and make sure that's not going to go anywhere. Now you're done. Thank you for watching the video of the Tesla Model S sub for install by BU DesignWorks. I'm Brody. If you have any more questions, our link to our website is in the description below. Thanks.